What's up guys, today I'm gonna teach you guys three new effects that you can use with After Effects' new Roto Brush 3.0. Let's go. What's up guys, my name is Evan Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, After Effects has just dropped its new Roto Brush 3.0. At the time of recording, I know I am a couple weeks late, but as a video editor, it's extremely important to mention the fact that there is a new update to Roto Brush because visual effects, video editing, Roto Brush is pretty much our lives. At the time of this video, for this video, you will be needing After Effects beta to access Roto Brush 3.0. So if you don't have the Crave Cloud suite right now, you might be out of luck, but who knows in the future, maybe a year from now, Roto Brush 3.0 should just be in After Effects regular. But before we get started, if you guys are looking to spice up your music videos and add just any extra sauce or you make your visuals stand out, definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. There I seriously spill all the sauce. When I say spill all the sauce, I, I spill it everywhere. There I have preset packs ranging from preset title cards all the way to artificial camera shakes. They integrate perfectly with After Effects and Premiere Pro and we even have some for Lightroom for those of you who are into taking photos. I seriously pour my heart and soul into creating preset packs that are just easy for you guys to use and also deliver really good high quality video results. So if you're definitely interested in upping your visual effects game and purchasing some of our packs, it really mean the world to me. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into tutorial. All right guys, so now that we're finally inside of After Effects, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to have your clip loaded up, of course. Preferably if your subject is doing something, hand movements, a lot of movement, moving up close to the camera, those usually create the better rotoscope effects. Just a side little note. So the first thing that we're gonna do, of course, is we're gonna hit Command D on your subject, on your clip, to duplicate it. Now we're gonna have a second layer right here and now it's time, the moment we all been waiting for, Rotoscope 3.0. Come over here, click on the Rotoscope icon and uh, let's double click this clip. So double click the top layer, that's that's how you Rotoscope in After Effects. And now let's get to it. So for those of you who don't know how to Rotoscope, really, really simple. You just select the brush, it comes up with a green little tool. You just drag and color your subject basically and it selects the subject based off of what it sees. And already off the bat, it's doing a pretty good job. You can hold Option or Alt if you're on PC to remove any areas that are over selected. But anyways, off the bat, it's doing a really solid job. Now the selection, the first initial selection is always part where you have to fine tune everything. But let's go ahead and jump right into just moving the playhead ahead. Um, and once you start dragging the playhead ahead, you'll see that After Effects is doing honestly an incredible job of keeping this selection like all in bounds. So you see right here, I think the only area that we could um, adjust the selection is this, his hand right here in the corner. I guess most of the major improvements in After Effects Roto Brush 3.0 just comes in the maintaining the selection. It's doing honestly a great job at that. And boom, there we go, we made it to the end of the clip. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Throughout the entire rotoscope, I barely had to make any corrections. I think I made one correction and this is pretty good. Honestly, props to After Effects, props to Adobe. They really killed it with After Effects Roto Brush 3.0. Now, one thing I always like to do once I finish my rotoscopes is hit the freeze button. Why? Because trust me, you don't want to have an After Effects crash or whatever, and then all your rotoscope is lost, especially if it's like a really long clip. Just freeze it. That basically just locks in all the rotoscope and boom, there we go. There we have it. We have a nice rotoscope clip. We're going to come back to our main composition right here. Uh, you can click this little composition. Also, by the way, Real quick, if you come across this error, um, there's a little yellow bar right here and it says like frame rate mismatch. You can't select the rotoscope and it's just messing up your whole rotoscope. Trust me, this used to hit me all the time when I started off. It's really simple. You just come over here to composition, hit composition settings and basically select the frame rate right here and change your frame rate to the exact frame rate that it says in the little yellow error bar. It'll tell you a frame rate. It's like Make sure this clip is the same frame rate as your composition setting. Change your composition settings to that exact same frame rate right here. So mine's is 59.328 and it will just get rid of that error. Really big problem that a lot of people encounter and really simple fix. So yeah, just letting you guys know. Anyways, now it's time to actually jump into the real effects. Rotobrush 3.0 and three new effects that you can use in After Effects. Let's get into it. So number one, number one effect right here is going to be cloned blur effect. Now, let me explain. Let's go ahead and rename this layer right here. So I'm just gonna rename the Roto Brush layer to Roto Layer, boom, there we go. And now I'm just gonna hit Command D to duplicate that. So now we have Roto Layer 1 and Roto Layer 2. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the very first, the middle layer, the Roto Layer 1. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the drop down on this middle layer. We're gonna hit the drop down on our transform 
layer transform effects. And what we're gonna do is we are going to come a couple frames in and I'm gonna hit a position and scale keyframe. I'm gonna go a couple frames right after, right when he starts to raise his hands up. And I'm just going to simply increase the scale just a tad bit and I'm gonna move it a little bit more to the center. And now we have this like growing effect right here. And honestly, that kind of looks cool, but let's go ahead and spice it up just a little bit more. I'm going to come over here to my effects and presets. First effect of the video is gonna be directional blur. Right here, directional blur, drag it onto your middle roto brush layer right here and boom, nothing happened. What the hell? No, just kidding. All you have to do is simply increase the blur length right here and we're just gonna increase it something like 30-ish. There we go. Now we have a pretty cool blur clone. Now this effect is very basic and very simple. Heads up really quick before we get into the rest of this video, before we go on, I'm trying, the reason why I'm also doing this video is because I'm sorry, but music video and visual effects game right now is so dead. Everybody's using the same exact synth, laser, yeet type, edit, roto brush, yeah. clone, trippy, distort, warp effects. Like we're so past that. That is so 2021. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. The way to go right now, I'm not setting the trend. I'm just saying the way to go right now is simple visual effects. All the crazy visual effects, car with the K, space hearts, all them. They really killed it in that 2021 era of like crazy visual effects and we had all those synth beats. But now we're, we're beyond that. We're on a, onto a simpler, more fine, refined taste age and era of visual effects. And the key to creating cool visual effects, particularly this era, is just simplicity. Very simple effects. And that's what I'm trying to aim for for these three rotoscope effects. I'm not gonna make a tutorial going over like synth, warp, trippy, liquid, distort effects because we've, we've done that and y'all seen all those videos already. They're done, they're old. But now it's time for us as artists to move beyond that. You get it, that's all. I'm, thank you, thank you for listening to my speech. This one right here can be an effect finished effect if you want. What you can also do is you can just duplicate this again, hit command D, and then we're gonna go over here to the very bottom layer once again, and we're just gonna change the scale and position once again, like to a bigger version. And then that way we have these like three crazy clones going on. If you'd like to, of course, you can just decrease the opacities just a tad bit, or you can change them to the blending modes to screen or add. And that way we kind of have like a more cool ghosting effect. But honestly, that's it. Of course, I would say go ahead and add some camera shakes. Camera shakes are always the key golden sauce to make an ending effect look good. We're not gonna go over camera shakes today, but if you'd like to, you can check it out 11%.net. There we just dropped our new Shake It Up preset pack for Premiere Pro. Really easy to use drag and drop adjustment layers. You can go check it out, link in the description. That, that would help specifically with this one. All right guys, now we're back to a blank slate. We just have our base layer and our rotoscope layer. Let's move on to our second effect, which is going to be the infamous D1, D go to Echo Blur. Of course, this one is a killer, absolute killer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate our top roto layer again. I'm gonna come to the middle layer and I'm gonna come to our effects and presets and I'm gonna search for Echo. I'm gonna drag Echo to the middle layer Follow very carefully, echo to the middle layer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit the drop down on the middle layer rotoscope layer, and I'm going to hit a drop down on the effects and the drop down on echo. Follow, follow along. We're gonna hit a keyframe at the very beginning, and we're gonna make sure we change that value to zero. Keyframe of number of echoes, zero, at the very beginning of this clip. Come a couple frames in, uh, however many frames that is, that's up to you, and we're gonna change the number of echoes to 10. Uh, lastly, we're gonna change the decay to 0.8. And boom, there we go. Now we have a nice sick echo. Now, if you want, you can honestly leave this as the effect. This is already pretty cool off the bat, but once again, like I said, minimalistic, simple. One key effect that I think just really ties this in, once again, is a directional blur. We're gonna search for a directional blur in our effects and presets and drag it to the middle layer once again. And make sure you incorporate the, the angle, the angle of the direction of the blur in the same way the motion is moving. So in our case scenario, the hands are moving up, they're going up, so we're just gonna keep the direction at zero. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the blur length to something like 30-ish and boom, there we go ladies and gentlemen, we have a nice sick blur echo effect. And boom, there you go ladies and gentlemen, if you play that out, we have a nice sick echo blur effect. Very simple, but it really just enhances the video. This, this is what I'm talking about, simple minimalistic effects like this. And now finally moving on to our third final effect for the video, Rotoscope 3.0, third effect, my go-to, my favorite, my baby, the chroma warp distortion effect. This tutorial blew up my channel, so shout out to the chroma warp distortion effect. What we're gonna do for this effect is very simple. Search for turbulence displace. In this one, we're not gonna be duplicating the rotoscope layer. We are going to be affecting the bottom most layer. So this one, turbulent displace, where is it? Hold up, I have to 
type the entire word. I'm gonna search for turbulent displays and apply it to the bottom layer. Boom, look at that, so wavy. I'm gonna hit the drop down on the bottommost layer, hit the drop down on the turbulence displays, and I'm going to hit a keyframe on the evolution key and the amount key. Now I'm gonna set the amount to zero right now. Then I'm gonna go a couple frames in and I'm going to, let's, you know what, let's drag that zero amount keyframe like a couple frames in as well. And I'm gonna go a couple frames in to right before where he starts moving his hand and I'm just going to increase this amount to something like, like 60, 70 ish. That's a good value to where it's not too much, but it's enough. And then I'm gonna go to the very end of the clip and I'm just going to drag the evolution key to something like 45 degrees. Now what the evolution basically does is it basically just affects how much the video effect is gonna be like moving or, or changing within the time span. So boom, there we go. Now we have a nice trippy, like the, the video effect just turns warpy. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna search for the chroma where is it? Chroma, VR chromatic aberrations effect. And I'm gonna drag and apply this to our bottom base, base layer as well. Again, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the very beginning right here where our amount is set at zero and I'm going to set a keyframe at all my aberrations of red, green and blue. And then I'm gonna change all these values to zero. Uh, make sure they're all set to zero. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come a couple frames in to where the footage becomes all warped and blurry. And I'm gonna set these to five, the red to five and the blue to negative five. And boom, there we go. Now we have a nice little chroma warp effect going on right here. Kind of looking cool, but let's go ahead and spice it up with just one more effect. And that's gonna be the glow. Just basic, simple glow and glow up, glow real up, glow real up. All right, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna drag the glow right here to our base layer as well. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come once again to this very beginning keyframe where we set the amount of the turbulence displays to zero and I'm gonna set the glow, oops, let me hit the drop down on glow and I'm gonna set the intensity to zero as well. So let's hit a keyframe on intensity and hit it at zero. And then we're gonna go a couple frames in. I'm just gonna increase that to something like 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And then one important thing, no keyframe, but no keyframe button, but we are just going to increase, increase the radius to something like 100. And then honestly, we could decrease the intensity just a bit, because that is a bit bright. Something like 0 0.6 is pretty good. And one last effect to apply, just to tie it all together, is going to be radial blur. And I'm just gonna drag and apply this to our bottom layer as well. Again, boom, there we go. Now it's, now it's starting to look a little bit crazy. Don't worry, don't worry. What I'm gonna do is right before this effect takes action, I'm going to hit a keyframe at the amount set it to zero and then I'm going to go a couple frames in when the effect actually starts and I'm gonna set this to something like three and then I'm gonna go a couple frames after and set it back to zero. And then that way we have a nice little subtle blur but it just helps blend everything together. And with that ladies and gentlemen, there is the third chromatic aberration blur effect. This one really just enhances your background. Simple effect, but really just spices it up. And before I move on, one last effect I almost forgot to add, completely almost forgot. We're gonna come over to our effects and we're gonna search for like and sub, oh my goodness, this effect is not coming up. Oh, my fault. Bruh. It's a button right here. It's not an effect, it's a button. It's called like and subscribe. Make sure you hit it, please. It means the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry, I had to pull that one. Yeah, like the video and subscribe. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just wanna say thank you again so much for watching. If you found any value or help from this video, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so really, it means the world to me. Once again, if you're looking to spice up your music videos, definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. We have a bunch of crazy preset packs there and we're continuously dropping preset packs in the future. For example, we just dropped our new Chrome 3D visual effects pack. That one's insane. It's literally just a bunch of Chrome 3D effects and with the green screen background, you key it out, super easy to use and it just, definitely makes your visuals stand out. If you had any questions or concerns throughout the entirety of this tutorial, definitely make sure to leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Remember, you can join our Discord server here at this link in the description. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.